Chilling brothers and sisters, I've been praying this week on what to talk about for the Thursday thought. And this morning it really came to me. I want to ask you, have you read it? Now, hearing that question, I believe that a number of thoughts will come into people's minds depending on who you are and where you are in your spiritual journey. And I want to talk about a couple of these ideas. If I ask you, have you read it? And your first thought is the Bible. That makes sense. Um, I was actually talking to my mom recently, and she was talking about how when she, I I think I've told you guys before, when um, we joined the Salt Lake City Church when I was about four or five years old, And she always felt like she had to read the Book of Mormon. And even when it was a year that was a a New Testament or Old Testament study, she felt like it was was more important to read the Book of Mormon. And she just felt this call to read the Bible. And she's reading the Bible right now. And and she just feels like it's it's this refreshing thing, like she's woken up. She's, She's finally reading the Bible. And so obviously I strongly encourage that, the Bible of Scripture. And the Lord is telling her to read it. So if I say, have you read it? And you're thinking, he's talking about the Bible. That instinctive thought you had, I believe, is the Holy Spirit telling you what it is the Lord needs you to read. At the same time, we're Latter-day Saints. We're Mormons. So if the first thing you thought of is the Book of Mormon, then I would encourage you to read the Book of Mormon because... Going back to the Bible for a second, there's there's like these these layers in my mind. So in, in the Bible, it says in the New Testament that people will be converted, Paul says, by being hearers of the word. Now, I, I have a hard time fully believing this, literally, because we see people like comedian, I believe the comedian's name is Bill Maher. Uh, he talks against the Bible all the time. It's very clear that he has not read it for comprehension. He does not seem to understand what it says. And so because of that, he generally looks rather foolish when he asks people, Have you, do you believe this book? Well, it says this ridiculous thing. Do you believe that? And it's like, um, do you know what you're talking about? Have you actually read this thing? I mean, you say you have, but if you're just reading it to try to find fault with it, then obviously you're not... You're not really a hearer of the word. You're not seeking after truth. You're looking to mock the things of God, right? So starting with that level, if you're going to read the scriptures, you have to read them with true intent. Seeking, honestly seeking, truth through the spirit of God. Because it is from God that God is the source of all truth. So then, let's look at the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon has a promise in it. If you pray on these things, says Moroni, then the Lord will tell you if they're true or not. Right? So, now we're, we're hearers of the Word. We're actually listening to hear truth. And now with the Book of Mormon, hey, go to the Lord. Ask Him for yourself. Is this true? And I would encourage you to do that with the Bible, both the Old and the New Testament, and the Book of Mormon, and any other scripture the Lord places upon your heart to study. As the person who is translating and has translated a portion of the plates of brass, maybe you thought I was talking about the Torah of Moses. Dave's asking Have you read the Torah of Moses? We're going to add another layer here. First, you are trying to be a true hearer of the word. You're you're reading and studying with real intent. The Book of Mormon is another layer. We're going to take this to the Lord and ask the Lord to reveal to us truth. Well, in the Torah of Moses, before the Torah of Moses, I should say, The Lord gave me a revelation that he asked me to put in here before the book. And this 
This is, I guess, Dave's promise? I don't know. It says that if you, in verses, so you really start in verse uh, 21, um, 21 through probably 25. I'm, I'm not going to read all of that. But it basically says here that the Lord is the witness of, of this, and I would say of all Scripture. And that as you read it, if, if you already have the spirit of prophecy and revelation from the Book of Mormon, and or just have that spirit of prophecy and revelation from the Bible or anything else, then the next layer here is the Lord will testify to you this is true, because you will say, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. It says in verse 23, they shall read it and filled with my spirit and resting in my presence. They too shall say, and all that Yavah has spoken, we will do. So we are honest seekers trying to hear the word of the Lord. We take what we have heard to the Lord and ask him, is this true? And then this next step is all that God tells us to do, we will do. And I believe that there is a reason why it's done in these stages. First, we have to know that there's a God, right? We, we know God's real. This is this Bible. This is the word of God. But what do you do with that? Step two, you become part of a prophetic people. You unlock that spirit of prophecy and revelation. You go to the Lord and the Lord tells you, now you know by my spirit in you, awakening the spiritual gift for you, that this is true. It isn't just, I heard it, it sounds good, it feels right. You went to the Lord now. And so you know you are a special witness because of your revelation. And then finally, just because you know, what does that mean? We are called to do the works of the Lord. And so with the Torah of Moses from the plates of brass, we are moved by the Spirit to go and do these works. All that the Lord tells us. All that the Lord tells us to do, we will do. All that he gives us to do, we will do. The gospel is love in action. Why? Because God is love and love is is a verb. It is an action. Now, did some other book come into your mind? Did you hear something else when I said, have you read it? Did you immediately think the Doctrine and Covenants for your church? The book of Elijah's message. The Doctrines of the Saints some other work of scripture that the Lord has placed upon your heart. I asked you the way that I did because it is my prayer that the Lord will awaken in you when I ask that question, the scripture that you are to read. And I want to encourage you to go and read it. I also want to share something else with you, and that is this. When this book was published, I'm going to focus on this book again for a second. When this book was published, in my mind, I had other work to do, and this portion of the work was done. Okay, I'm done with this. I can set it over here. Other people can now go and take this and do with it as, as the Lord moves them to. And I'll be honest, after editing it for two years. You know, I translated it. I studied it. I edited it. I was really kind of expecting to move on to what's next. And, and in a sense, I have. But the Lord keeps bringing me back to it. I am listening to it through Speechify. I have a Word document that I'm using to make it a little bit easier. A friend of mine used a computer program to pull out all the notes so that it will read them correctly. So if you would like to use Speechify, 
send me an email info at cjccf.org and I will send you a copy of that and then you can also listen without all the notes in there. But the odd thing is, every time I talk to someone, I feel an impression from the Spirit to ask them, have you read this? And it's not like, you know, when I was a kid, I would draw a picture and I'd be like, hey, mom and dad, have you seen this? Look at this great picture they drew. It's a completely different feeling. It's a, this is something that people need to read. And when I talk about this, I want you to understand that I'm not just talking about the Torah Moses. I, I, I am right now, but I'm also talking about other scriptures that the Lord, if the Lord tells you, go out and, and recommend this book to people, that's the one that the Lord has testified to you to go out and share with people. Because the flip side to all this, and we have our, our little chain, you know, our, our little growth chart, if you will. But we also have Satan working in the background saying, read it to mock it. Don't take it seriously. Look to find fault. I have actually seen, I've talked about this before, I've actually seen Protestant billboards. I've seen Protestant websites. I've seen Protestant books that say, don't read it. Don't read the Book of Mormon. That's how they get you. Don't pray on the Book of Mormon. It's how they get you. And right now, the Lord has had me use my own money and a little bit of fellowship money, depending on, on where we were at financially, to send copies of this book to people, certain people for free. Some of these people I didn't even know. I had no idea who these people were. But the Lord moved one person to contact me and say, can you please send this, this individual a copy of the, of, of the book? And it felt right. It felt good. And so I did. Now, we are not a wealthy organization. We do not have billions. We don't have millions. We don't even have thousands. We, we, we're lucky when we have a, you know, a couple hundred dollars in our, our bank account. But the Lord has provided for us to ensure that his will can be done. And when he hasn't, the Lord's provided through me miraculous opportunities where I was able to have a little bit of extra money from, from the Lord to send these books to people. And all Satan has to do to stop the progress is get them to not read it. How many homes have Bibles in them that have never been read? I know it's a lesser extent, but how many homes have a Book of Mormon in them that maybe they've been read, but no one's ever prayed on them? And the Torah of Moses has been out now for several, not several, but well, I guess a few years. It's been, what, three years now, two or three years? And really, because I've been putting it out as I was working on it, it's really been available in some form or another since this this whole project started. And all Satan has to do is stop people from reading this freely available book you don't have to go to Amazon and purchase it because we offer it for free online. You don't have to go to Amazon or any bookstore to purchase the Bible or the Book of Mormon because they're free online. Christians all over the world are making sure that scriptures are available in one way or another and easy to get to. And all Satan has to do is nudge people a little. Hey, you're too busy. You don't have time to read this. Why are you wasting your time with this? There's something more fun you could be doing. Something something that's more, more interesting. I don't know what could be more interesting than the scriptures, except for pure revelation. That's the only thing that, in my mind, is more interesting than the scriptures. I like to talk about the scriptures. I like to study the scriptures by myself and with others. Satan wants that to stop. 
He wants us to close these books and ignore them. So my Thursday thought for you is this. What book or books are you supposed to be reading? When I ask you, have you read it? What book came to your mind? Or what collection of books came to your mind? And I want to encourage you to read what the Lord is asking you to read, whatever it is, for whatever reason the Lord is asking you to read it. The fight against Satan is far simpler than he wants us to believe. Read, study, pray, and love. That's the formula of success in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's my Thursday thought, and I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.